Model railroading is not really a popular hobby in India. But what if I told you that one of the finest model railways built at the highest standard of model making, miniature art and sophisticated technology exists here? Welcome to Abenstern Nebenbahn, a masterful creation by Vikas Chander who learned a whole new language to build this model railway. You might know Vikas Chander as a highly talented railway documentary maker or an award-winning astrophotographer who has traveled extensively in India and around the globe to capture and document various railways and produces the mesmerizing Heavens on Earth Astro Time Lab series. But many people don't know that he has also built a model railway that can be easily attributed as one of world's finest. Not only the individual models are built at fine-scale museum quality standard, the display boasts completely automated operation of several trains following strict timetable without any human intervention. Computer-controlled 24-hour cycle simulates every hour of the day and matches train movements accordingly. Special atmospheric simulation like fog machines and atmospheric sound speakers take you back to 1970s Germany as you get completely immersed in this alternate reality. So much so that you almost expect those tiny figurines to start moving. Let's hear from the man himself how he started building this masterpiece. So because Tell me how you started on your journey to build this layout and why did you choose 1970s Germany as your prototype? What happened was that I had a, this layout room which I was there presently when I started out in the hobby, I knew nothing. Like, you know, I was mixing eras and countries like American trains running on uh, along with German trains and all of that. So as you... As I started learning more about the hobby, I realized that I need to have an era and I need to have a time time which the trains are running in and it has to be very country specific. German locos from Fleischmann and Rocco, you know, they used to run really well and I really used to like them compared to the other ones. So slowly, slowly I started drifting towards German uh, model railroading. So slowly the bug of German railroading, you know, it grew. It, it wasn't something which happened overnight. So, Vikas, tell me a little bit about your prototype. Uh, have you selected a real railway in Germany or is this inspired by various uh, railways uh, in Germany, like a proto-freelance way? It's a real railroad set in a real era. German railways is divided into five eras. Right. Like one, two, three, four and five. Mm -hmm. With three being the most interesting because that was the period when steam transitioned to diesel. So if you were modeling era three, then you can run steam and uh, uh, diesels together. And that's what's happening in my layout. So it was a, it was a very, uh, it is very strictly prototypical German uh, model railroading, you know, very strict time period, very strict planning went into it. Got it. And, uh, what type of track work was prevalent at that time they used to have one is to nine uh, prototype switches the angles the frogs and all that so how did you plan and execute these authentic german scenes uh, living here in india well there's a lot of reference material available on german railways luckily on the internet and uh, plus the magazine uh, the german modeling magazines are time a dozen you know you can get so many of them it's not funny you know a lot of information there is a language barrier which slowly i got over by learning german myself and uh, you know i'm not very fluent but i can understand and read and understand what what is saying. so basically it was a mix of travel to the places 
it was uh, between 2007 and 2015 i must have been to germany maybe 20 25 times uh, wow. just to either visit a trade show or a you know a steam festival or just general research plus internet plus books so it's a mix of everything you know it's not uh, uh, just one specific thing it's <laughs> yeah i mean absolutely the 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 travel and the magazines are still okay but learning a whole new language for model making that is definitely a different level of dedication yeah no no question about it yeah because actually the german language is very technical they they like if you if you want to research about signals mm-hmm. you'll find 40 books on just german railway signaling and you know and when you open them you can't understand a word of what they're saying and you know you you need to be able to understand those technical words so even when you learn the language they don't teach you these technical railway words absolutely you know <laughs> and uh, so slowly by reading by referring to dictionaries and by <laughs> just <laughs> uh, just by conversing with others you know you understand slowly it took it took time it, it wasn't something which happened you know overnight Vikas started building this layout back in 2011 and in less than 10 years he has created this museum quality display. He planned everything even before he drove the very first crew in. I have included the links to his blog post that will give you further details to the various aspects of his layout. Make sure to take a look and learn more about his techniques and methods. Coming to operation, computer controls everything. The Abenstand station is definitely the focal point of the action with four platforms and two dedicated tracks to handle freight. Around 20 feet of industrial complex provides plenty of opportunity to do switching in a hyper realistic industrial setup in 1970s Germany. The single line track plan enforces some very interesting traffic situations and the entirely automated signaling system controls all the trains. The signals themselves are truly fine scale and pretty much the gold standard in model railroading technology. But Vikas made sure to go that extra mile again and created signal bound simulation for his semaphores, showing the play of gravity and the tension of the signal cables during a semaphore operation that generates random movement of the signal arms, just like the real thing. All these elaborate structures and scenes are built from scratch. Not a single kit has been used. The base of the structures is either styrene or acrylic where the brick and concrete textures are completely hand carved for this entire section, including the streets. Now the incredible craftsmanship and skills that have gone into building this scene is mind blowing for sure, but that in itself is not enough to give that immersive experience without all the special effects. a very effective backdrop treatment and controllable lights to simulate different time of the day so let's ask him how he did that so vikas would you mind telling me the secret of your backdrops because this is definitely one of the most successful backdrop treatment that i have ever seen well actually my other hobby is photography and landscape photography So in that you always uh, you know whenever you're composing a shot you think of the foreground you think of the middle ground and you think of the background background yeah and that's what i did here is that it's actually i have uh, a sort of a layered approach to the backdrop there is the sky first on that there is a very uh, a very faint cityscape on that leaving a gap of an inch is cutouts of buildings just low relief and then the three dimensional building in front of that so basically it's four layers so it creates a little bit of a depth uh, you know instead of just having a backdrop which is just printed 
if you look at it there is the sky which is very hazy mm-hmm. then there is uh, the city horizon which is very faded and then the low relief uh, cutouts are slightly faded and then come the main buildings in front of it so it's yeah. just to sort of create an illusion of depth in that a lot of model makers spend time and effort uh, to put a lot of details in their model railroad or dioramas and some people are passionate about fine scale models too uh, now in your work uh, you have not only put a lot of fine scale details but you have also created this atmosphere uh you have created uh, controllable lights uh that can you know bring different times of day you have used fog machines to uh bring low visibility context into your model railroad so what really inspired you to build an atmosphere along with some incredibly detailed models well that uh, is because of my background in djing i used to be a disc jockey in a disco in delhi <laughs> okay when i was young and i used to play around a lot with lighting and smoke and you know all those kind of disco effects and a protocol called dmx lighting which is mm-hmm. digital multiplex lighting yeah so i was very well aware of uh, the possibilities with what lighting you could do so i said why not incorporate it into my layout what actually started out as just as a gimmick you know and uh, uh, having red green and blue lights on it so that you could mix the colors and create any kind of effect so basically it was that background which helped me to put in the lighting and uh, i feel that uh, uh, because of my background also in photography i wanted to be, be to ensure that there was proper lighting on the layout in case i wanted to photograph it at some point in the future mm-hmm. so those are the motivating factors and actually since i was very clear with the concept of lighting it didn't take much effort for me to really put it in and so i put it in and uh, i had a smoke machine handy so i used that you one likes to see a nicely lit layout you know if you are going to work hard on the details and the rolling stock and the weathering and everything you want it to show up well yeah and that can only be possible if you have, first of all have a shadow box effect mm-hmm. so that the light doesn't get dissipated and then the lighting itself is strong and even evenly lit is very important you shouldn't have dark and light shadows you know on different parts of the layout and uh, controllable lighting i can control the color temperature i can control the intensity can control the color of lighting so those all all were very important to me in the beginning so i dwelled on it a little bit it took me about 3 4 months to put everything together but i think uh, it it turned out okay for me and i think it's an important part of my layout and now coming to automation uh, this is of course a fully automated system um, but but the lights and the effects uh, that uh, is automated too uh, the train train controller can control those yes yeah yeah all the lights and all are controlled by the computer yeah and train controller does that so basically i can have a time mm-hmm. but i can have a timetable running you know and if a train leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning then you have a 6 o'clock lighting the train is leaving at 8 o'clock then you have early morning lights and i have these sequences running from day to night you know automatically which uh, which the the software controls but it's not just the atmospheric lights of the layout or simulating a time of the day using dmx lighting vikas also has elaborate lighting in all his buildings and once those lights come on at night it unveils the intricate details inside the buildings you can discover new characters and their stories in many of these windows one of the biggest success of this layout for me is the incredible depth that you can experience even though the layout is built on 3 feet deep shelves the layered backdrop the shadow box and even lighting that vikas just talked about all play a role in creating that illusion looking down the ebenstone station towards the industrial area you get a 40 feet deep view which is exactly one scale kilometer with broad 40 inch radius curves around the corner and a curved backdrop the eyes can seamlessly and effortlessly follow the trains as if you're looking down on a real place standing on top of a tall building rail fanning and following those signals so because 
what would be your key advice uh, to model railroaders, uh, whether they're starting off or they have some experience to be able to build a successful layout like yours? Uh, don't build a layout without a plan. Mm-hmm. Thinking you'll evolve around the way because that always ends badly. Right. And the second thing I would say is that spend a lot of time getting your track work and wiring correct. Mm-hmm. Because if that doesn't work properly, then the whole fun is lost. Yeah. Your rolling stock, your engines, your track work, your wiring, they all have to be bulletproof. So that's an area one shouldn't compromise on. If you want to compromise, compromise on your scenery. That's up to you because that doesn't affect the running of the trains. Mm-hmm. But whatever is concerned with running of the trains, the wiring, the track work, the the engine quality and the rolling stock quality, they, they should not be compromised on at all. If you think that uh, you will get away with it, something, you're, you know, with the mistake you're making or the compromise you're doing, trust me, you won't. Mm-hmm. It will show up. And especially if you're planning to automate your layout, the co- the computer is not going to forgive any mistake. It wants everything perfect. It wants your electromagnets, your tortoise switch motors. It wants your electrical continuity, your wheel pickup. Your everything has to be bulletproof. There cannot be one mistake or one compromise would mean that you're going to have a stall or a derailment, and that's going to stop everything. So. Don't compromise on uh, these areas when building a model railroad. I mean, I, I, I've been uh, running this layout now for nearly eight, eight years now, nine years. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have any, you know, uh, problems which I can't, which are, you know, un- unsurmountable for me. They're just simple, pro- maybe a feeder has worked loose or some silly problem like that. But uh, it runs properly because it's been built properly. And that is the biggest takeaway I can uh, sort of give, you know, to anyone who's planning to make a layout with automation. Abenstern Nebenbahn is hands down one of the best model railroads of the 21st century in my book. The care, dedication and all-around excellence in craftsmanship that has gone into building this layout is nothing short of amazing. Do you agree with my assessment? Let me know in the comments below. And as this layout is almost over, barring a resin port to make the Fulda River and some super detailing of the town, one can expect to see another marvel from Vikas when he starts his next project. Now, how wonderful it would be if a man of his skills picks an Indian prototype to build a layout of this caliber.